What I really like about this manifold is the edges are rounded here and it's CNC ported. But there are a couple edges that I want to just try and smooth out like that one and kind of blend it here. See, that would be another sharp edge right there where it comes out to the oxygen sensor. So I can try and round that one. There's gonna be another one down here. I could try and round those if possible. This one doesn't really look like it was possibly not done at all. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Now they're a little sharp there, so I'm just gonna work on rounding those. So this is rounded pretty good. I think these are okay. I, I, I don't know, I might go back and try and round those. I just, I don't know if I really want to spend that much time on it. They don't feel very sharp there. I want to look for things like that where it won't allow the manifold to fit flush to the head so i'm going to file that one down there's one right there and there's a little something that got caught in the paint right there so i'll file those out i got the porting done i just smoothed it out a little bit makes that transition to the ports Here's what it looks like at the turbo flange. And then down there at the wastegate holes, I rounded those. these edges here and I just kind of ported it a little bit to clean it up see I kind of ran the tool over there on accident Here's the manifold after I put all the new seals on it. I recommend putting it on the manifold rather than in the head. There's a lot of prep work that I would recommend doing to the head before putting the manifold on. I went through and I sanded all the old gasket out of the head. And I also sanded a little bit of the corrosion off to try and make it so it wouldn't hold the manifold out of position. Oh, get off me. Another thing that I did, I removed all the studs and then I put the studs back in and then unthreaded them again to make sure all the holes were clean without any debris in there. I cleaned them up with carb cleaner, then aired them out. Then you have to remove one of the studs because there's not room for that one. The other stud right there, you have to grind six mil, it's five and a half millimeters to six millimeters off, so you can put a nut on that one. All the other studs go back in like normal. And I put anti seize on all the studs, so hoping that they won't get stuck again, because I had two of them that got stuck, and they were, one of them was very difficult to remove. I was trying to put the studs in. And the studs are, or the nuts are made to be, to lock. So they just kind of destroyed the studs when I was trying to use the nuts to put the studs in. I think that was just a real poor decision for them to make the kit that way. But see these nuts, they, they have this cut in them and then they're compressed down. 
so the thread's really tight on that side. And then it expands when you tighten them down. So they lock in place. I think the problem is it's just going to cause a bunch of issues later on. So I'm just going to tap the nuts out. Possibly just replace them or cut the ends of them off. And then I'll have to take this and re-thread it. This is a 10 millimeter by 1.5. If you're not sure how to figure out what size thread that is, you just grab your thread gauge. 